Okay, so our second linear data structure is the linked list data structure. So recall that for the array, our list is in a one continuous block of memory that uh, physically they are next to each other. So pretty much how I draw them, well, when you make a list that is continuous, it's basically what it is physically. For the linked list data structure, in remember that our main problem for the dynamic list is that when we only we can only get a fixed amount of memory from the computer or from our processor at a time. So whenever we fill up our original uh, memory space, we need to request some new one through the allocation. So what the linked list does is it doesn't need to remember, right? it doesn't need to fit all the elements in one block. It, each element I could put, uh, each element could have two properties or two, two objects in terms of OOP. One object of the node, uh, we're gonna call each element in the linked list the node. Uh, it has the data it needs to store, so the original content of the list, and then a pointer, or basically the memory location of the next element. So in this case, index zero, uh, using in using the first element, we know the location of the next element. And using that element, we know the location of the next element and so on and so forth. So in contrast, an array, we just need to know the location of the first element. And because they are physically next to each other, we just need to add a few numbers depending on the size of each object to know the memory location of the other objects. So there, there's actually an implementation here in Python, but uh, uh, you can read through that on your own. But basically what, uh, what this means is that when I need to access the fourth element, I need to ask the zeroth element, where's index number one? I mean, uh, when we ask our linked list manager, uh, where is uh, element number four? It will say, wait, let me ask index zero. When you ask index zero, it tells you to ask index one. And then index one will ask you to ask index two. And then index two will ask, will tell you to ask index three. And then index three will tell you to ask and index three will already have the memory location of index four. So we sort of traverse through the list in order to go to that element. So that, op that uh, operation or that action of asking takes time. So uh, in order to reach the nth element of a list, we need to go to n nodes or you need to ask n nodes to reach the end of the list so the worst case time complexity when we need to access an element is actually linear or n so and then uh, what i referred to as the sort of controller of the list is what we call the sentinel node which is uh, the pointer or the memory which stores the memory location of the first element of our list. You can see, you will be able to see that in this implementation. Uh, it's exactly this one, self.head, wherein it's a black node, wherein the next will point to the first element. So now, uh, how will we insert an element to our linked list? So first is we need to access 
the index. So if we, for example, we want to insert that index three, we first try to access index three and let the element in index three, uh, we uh, need to insert at index four, oh my bad. Uh, it goes to index three and makes index three element point to our new element. And then our new element will point to the before or what was the index four before. So basically, you just tell the third element, hey, there's a new element, there's a new element number four, go point to that. And then tell your new element to point to what was previously pointed by index three, which will now be index five. So the delete operation would actually be the same. So uh, it first accesses the element before the element we want to delete. In this case, if we want to delete index two, we ask index one to point to index three instead, and then forget forget about <laughs> index two. And then, so we forget about the element number seven over here. So uh, both of these require traversal. So since traversal or the accessing uh, takes n time. It actually it's what actually limits the running time of the insert and delete functions. So actually, the access insertion and deletion running time of a linked list is almost uh, always linear at worst case. But that does come at a cost that we don't need to reallocate memory anymore. So depending on your system or your computer, as I've mentioned in the introduction of the video, some computers may not have that much memory where we can just reallocate anytime we want. So in those cases, we might actually want this kind of an implementation for the uh, dynamic list ADT. And then uh, lastly, mm, some another implementation of the linked list data structure is what we call the doubly linked list, wherein we just don't uh, point to the next element, we also point to the previous element. So what changes here is that uh, instead of just having a pointer for the first element, we have a pointer for the last element. Since we know that the worst case in accessing a linked list is accessing the last element, so why not have a pointer to the last element and a way for us to work our, work our way from that last element to the middle of the list. So it takes, so what you'll notice here is that for each element, we have two more things to store. So that would mean uh, it would make it easier for us to traverse the list, but you know, it, it sort of, we sort of need more memory per element. So that's it for the linked list data structure.